going to demonstrate two alcohol-related calculations. But before I get to that, just to reiterate the fact that the National Road Traffic Act there is the presumption that's made that if a blood alcohol concentration of intoxicated driver is taken within a two hour time frame period, that blood alcohol concentration, even if it's at the two hour mark, is taken to be a depiction of a blood alcohol concentration at the time of arrest. The onus is then on the defense to actually prove that that is otherwise. Now let's look at Whitmark's formula and try and calculate maybe the amount of alcohol that someone has ingested. So if we look at Whitmark's formula, which you've come across before, and this would basically be the formula. And just to remind you again, this would be the amount of alcohol that's consumed. This would be the person's obviously weight in kilograms. This would be the blood alcohol concentration in grams per 100 mils. And this would be the distribution factor. Now let's, like, let's look at a 65 kilograms gentleman, maybe of average weight and not too fat, not too lean. So his distribution factor would be like 0 0.7. And let's say his blood alcohol concentration comes back as 0 0.24 grams per 100 milliliters, of course. Um, let's just times that by 10. So this would equal about 109 grams of alcohol. But now you still don't know how much he's actually consumed. So let's say he says he's just drank brandy and he didn't drink too much brandy. So let's work out how much brandy did he actually consume. Now if we look at brandy at like about 40% alcohol volume for volume, that would be about 8,4 grams per 25 moles which would remember be one unit or a shot of brandy. If we take this grams and we go 109 divided by 8,4 grams, this would equal about 13, approximately 13 maybe units or shot glasses of 25 mils of brandy that he has taken. Let's take another example. He says, no, he was just drinking beer with his buddies. So let's like look at a beer can. And if we say maybe, yeah, about a 375 moles of can of beer would be equal to about 15 grams of alcohol, of alcohol in that beer. So now we need to take that 15 grams. Again, we do the same calculation. And we divide that by 15 grams, we said we'll get to plus minus seven cans of beer that he has consumed. And this is kind of how you can apply Whitmark's formula to work out from the amount of alcohol and how that relates to maybe um, the type of alcohol that he has consumed. Let's look at another case scenario. So you get a 70 kilogram gentleman that was involved in a car crash and this happened at eight o'clock. He was arrested and he was taken to the hospital. Unfortunately, by the time that the blood alcohol concentration was taken, it was already 12 o'clock at night. So there's a four hour time lapse. This blood alcohol concentration at this time point was 0 0.24 grams per 100 milliliters. Now, obviously, you're called to court and you think, oh, this is a very high and significant blood alcohol concentration. But the fact it is that it's more than two hours. And now the defense say their client, just before the accident, he had consumed three double brandies. Now, remember, a brandy at 40% volume for volume is about 8.5 grams of pure alcohol. So they are saying that this blood alcohol concentration, it cannot be and he cannot be guilty that he was above the blood alcohol concentration at the time of arrest. So let's work with a Whitmark formula that we have and see if we can do a back calculation to see if this, what the defense is saying, can actually get their client free or, you know, was there maybe blood alcohol concentration already high at this time, taking this into Kind of consideration. Let's look at it. So let's work out how much brandy this would be. 
the amount of grams. So if we do this, we will get to about 50,4 grams of alcohol that's involved in their allegation. Now let's see if we can extrapolate this to Whitmark's formula, which you kind of know by heart by now. So if we want, we want to work out what the defense is kind of saying is the blood alcohol concentration at that time point of arrest. So to work out the blood alcohol concentration, we would take the amount of alcohol, which we've just calculated here, and we're going to put this into the equation here, where we've got the P times C times 10. Oh, sorry, not the C, but let's just put the R in there. And let's work this out. We said it's 70 kilograms. And um, we'll work out with a distribution factor of about 0 0.7 if it's an average weight. And if we do this calculation, we get to 0 0.1 grams per 100 moles. So let's see how much of this supposedly amount of alcohol that is taken would still be present in his blood at the time point of 12 o'clock. So if we take elimination of alcohol, which happens at a steady rate of 0 0.2 grams per 100 moles in an hour, and remember this is a four hour period, we have to multi multiply this by four, we would get 0 0.8. Now if we, oh sorry, 0 0.08, and if we need to subtract this now, which we got 0 0.1 gram minus 0 0.08 grams, which has been eliminated, we get 0 0.02 grams at the time point of 12 o'clock, which means that at the time of arrest, if this is anyway what we, we've got, that there must have been some alcohol already on board to have gotten a blood alcohol concentration of 0 0.2 grams per 100 moles. So even if he took three double shots of brandy just immediately prior to arrest, there was already um, some alcohol on board inside his blood um, to have gotten this large amount of blood alcohol concentration of 0 0.2 at the time point of 12 o'clock. I mean, obviously we can see it's very high, but this is just um, a little bit of an illustration to show that even work working with the formulas, that you kind of can um, dispute the defense and maybe help to prove that he was actually in fact intoxicated still even at the time point of 12 o'clock, even though it's four hours later. This was just some kind of illustration of how one can use the formulas um, and link it back to kind of what we understand of the blood alcohol curve to see how that might be able to help you in court of law if a defense says something. Of course, all calculations must be used with caution and it's very difficult if you don't have um, sequential blood alcohol concentrations, again, to determine on which leg of a blood alcohol curve that individual might find themselves. But that said, we never take a blood alcohol concentration just on its own whenever we deal with an intoxicated driver. We must take the whole situation into consideration, including the examination of the intoxicated driver. So I hope you have found this useful, and that is that.